We've both been in the same spot twice in a row for some time now. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> we'll take it. Hell yeah, dude. So we're talking about the Summer of Sam. Summer of Sam. You know, I'm so glad we're doing an episode like this because let's just be honest. We've all been sitting here saying this is what Sam should do. He should go get these type of players. And what does Sam do? He goes out and gets in the draft and he gets two guards essentially when everybody else is like we need forwards we need centers we need this right is Keon Johnson a guard I think he's like a power Dude, he's forward. a hybrid guard bro he, he's okay. like he's Kenny Hustle you know what I'm saying like okay, he's, okay. he's a he's a hybrid guard and and, and, that's, and I think that's what we're looking at now we're looking at these 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 guys that he's adding and they're all older what does that mean for our younger guys well it means that Sam Presti is either saying grow up now or we're moving on and there's a few of them and I'm sorry it's going to have to happen because at this point, you know, a lot of these guys have had a couple of years to develop and they haven't stolen playing time away. And you look at J-Dub and J-Dub just took that and ripped it away from everybody. So there's this idea of how quickly you need to start developing right now. Because if you're not, now you've got a couple of 25 plus year olds on the team that are saying, hey, hey, hey I'm ready. You know, Jack um, Lindell. Landell. Yeah, Landell. Yes. Landell. Yeah, Jack. Um, man. But you're talking about Jack, Jack White. White. I'm sorry, Jack White. Yeah. Another Australian yeah, yeah. connection. I love Jack White, man. This guy can do everything. And I think when it's all said and done, we're all going to be incredibly surprised by what he is capable of doing. Um, obviously, we watched uh, um, Jack in, um, at the NBL, which I, I love watching in the NBL, I did man. not, bro. You're going to have to fill me in on what he can do. Well, first of all, let's talk about his four years at Duke. Coach K um, was his coach the there board. at Duke. I, I love the fact that he had that opportunity there. Um, but the reality is, is that really where his, he got his stripes were, in my opinion, were the NBL years. He really tore it up for Melbourne. Um, this last year he came over and he played in the G league for um, Denver. So I, he's got that, that it factor, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've always enjoyed seeing a player like, uh, like Jack, that's, you know, not necessarily um, everybody's favorite player out there, you know, but like, he's a coach's favorite player. You know, you see the coach in the, uh, any coach that he's ever played for. And he's, I think he averaged close to 20 points a game in G league last year, but you know, the coach is always like, who am I going to stick out there? You know, like, and it's always Jack, man. It's like, you know, what, like we're not, we're not scoring well. We'll get Jack out there. We're not playing defense. Well, get Jack out there. You know, like you see this consistency with it, Jack and, and, Yes, we're talking about Mirchik in a minute here, but when I when I get excited about a, a player that's coming in, it's it's a player like Jack. That's six seven. He's a hustle player. He's going to do what it takes. He can. I would think that if he plays well enough, he could be one of those guys that that steals playing time away from the, some of the other forwards slash guards out there. And he's another six foot seven guy. That again, if you're talking about um, six six guys, six seven guys that are these forwards, you know, small forwards. No, they're the hybrid guards now, guys. That's that's just what we're gonna have to call him from now on. So, I like Jack White, um, but man, tell me about what you think about Mirachik because to me, like this was probably the biggest signing we've we probably ever had outside of the draft. So, Mitchic, I think is how we're gonna say his name until otherwise informed. But he, um, yeah, I, I did a little bit of a dive on on his game. I I should have done this a long time ago. Like if you think back about. We acquired his rights whenever we traded for Al Horford. Sure. And it was, we got the 2025 pick, which is actually right around the corner now, um, from the Sixers. And on top of that, we got the draft rights for this player that was an MVP level player over in the Euro League. But getting him over here, even though he was in his prime, was going to be yeah. really hard. So right. I kind of ignored him. He became a legend, and everybody thought, well, we'll see what happens. But so now that we got him, I, I jumped on, I started watching some some footage, and I'm like, what can this guy do? All right, he's a knockdown shooter, okay? And there's not a lot of spacing in, in the Euro League. So you mm -hmm. know, getting to that shot regularly off the bounce is something that, that he's capable of doing. But his biggest asset is in playmaking. Um, he's an incredible passer. Uh, he's an incredible, like, competent and playmaking defender, too. Yeah. Um, he understands positioning. He knows how to move his feet. And you add him to like what Cason Wallace can do with the way he shifts his feet and can play defensive positioning. I think we're going to have two really plus de defenders, and that's not something you really expect to get out of the Euro League, you know, traditionally. So with Mitic, I'm just like I'm looking at him, thinking in so many ways 
the same reason that Casein Wallace is the right dude at the right moment for us, M- Mitchell is the right dude at the right moment because mm. if he's out there and you say like, okay, we're going to hand him the ball and now you got to go create offense, like that's not really the role that he needs to be in. Um, mm. The best thing for him, I think, is going to be attacking closeouts. Um, being the third option on the court will mean that he ends up picking on different things. And to me, Mitchell's best attribute offensively is end of shot clock, end of game clock situations. He is clutch. He understands it. And in that way, although his game isn't like dead on comparison, in that way, he reminds me a lot of Manu Ginobili. Hmm. Like there is no player in the league that you wanted to have the ball on a short shot clock more than Manu. Manu could shoot so many shots that he never shot in games Hmm. unless he had to. Hmm. And I, I see Mitch as the same way. Like he can go logo threes, but why do that early in the offense? You know, mm. and he, so that's not something they teach in Euro League anyway. But whenever like end of game clock, end of shot clock situations, he will get a shot off that you're going to feel really good about. So having him in there as a creator for for the second unit, um, whenever you know things are getting down and it's either like Trey Man go to your step back or Mitchich go to create. When he goes to create. Like he sees plays happen before they happen. He's not particularly overly athletic. He's athletic enough with his size, but he has this ability to almost like glide through the air in um, shifting the defense. He's incredible. Like if you watch the ball with him, you're going to be out of position because he goes this way and then swings it back this way. And he knows how to shift hands, eyes and, and body. So like, He's really good lob threat, but what he does a lot of times to create the lob is as impressive as the pass that he throws. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And let, let's just talk about Mitchik, uh, Mitchish, Mitchish, Mitchik, whatever. Doesn't God. matter. We got to hear Michael Cage to say it to know how to say it, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's the thing I, I love about what he brings to this team. There has never been a team, I think, in the NBA, um, the history of the NBA, that has ever been able to do what I would consider a true five point guard lineup. Hmm. Think about this: J Dub point guard, SGA point guard, Josh Giddy point guard, Casein Wallace point guard, and why not throw Chet out there? He's got the skills of a point guard. Is there ever been another team in the history of the game that has five players that they can throw out there that can play point guard and dominate another team? pretty much inst- instantaneously. I don't think th- I don't think so. It, here's the thing that's crazy about this though. Adding Mitchick to this team allows this team to put up any lineup in the NBA to match up against any team. Any team. This is what's so insane about adding a player like him is that we didn't have to do anything so but salty. pay money for him. You know, and we were able to add him. Yes, we were as, as part of the Al Harford trade way back when, but the reality is is that that was an add-on, you know, now we're sitting here and we're going to be able to watch this player. And, and I don't know what the case is going to be, how long he's going to play on this team, but I do think that there's going to be a significant amount of time that he's going to play on this team, because why not? Why not teach uh, the, this game to other people? Now you got um, another player from Serbia there. You got Poku and, um, and Michik. Like this is exactly what needs to happen. We've talked about the, glob- the globalization, uh, globalization of the NBA. Now we're seeing it truly. You know, like the Oklahoma City Thunder are a perfect example of, of what's happening. And, and I love it, man. It makes me excited. Yeah, dude. Nice call on the Serbian connection. And um, as obviously everybody is getting excited about Jack White and an Jack additional White, Australian oh, connection. I love that guy. Um, he's so Salty great, dude. Is saying that he's a fierce competitor and give us a lot of bench depth. Um, but we have so much depth now. There's going to be some cuts made before the season starts. That's for sure. Um, this is a over we have too many players on there but that's what you do the roster expands in the off season right you come into training camp and you create a competitive environment and you let players earn their spot that's it um, man and let's be honest we've got what uh, 18 or 19 players so we've got to lose three players maybe four what this tells me is that the thunder have until the beginning of the season or like a week before or whatever to get their roster straight there's either going to be some cuts right or there has to be some trades, man. And if there's going to be some trades, who are we talking about trading? Because we, we can't trade the guys that we just signed on contracts because you have to wait until December to sign new um, contracts. Unless 
Mitchick counts as a rookie, then you can try, um, um, sign him 30 days after or trade him 30 days after um, he signed. So there's certain things like that that with this new CBA, we have to take a step back and wonder what players are going where and what players are getting cut maybe. And does that mean the time is over with Lindy Waters? I mean, we don't know. Like I, I keep going back to what the case could be, where we could be in, in a couple of years. But the reality is, is that what Sam has showed me through the last couple of drafts is point guards rule the NBA. You know, like remember the old school when when people used to say you can't win um, a championship with a good point guard, right? Remember that? Like you yeah, always had to have it. like a good shooting guard or a good big man, but you can never win with a point guard. I know I mean, what you I, mean. I, yeah, now it's over, man. Because what's going to happen is, is that teams are going to have to fill their entire teams with point guards in order and, and shooting guards in order to be able to stop a team like the Oklahoma City Thunder. Yeah, the nineties were filled up with shooting guards and and centers who were winning championships. And then you had like John Stockton, and Gary Payton, and Carl Malone. I'm sorry, Carl Malone was not a point guard, but that, he was with Stockton, but I'm talking about yeah, yeah, I got you. all the great point guards in the nineties seem to end up without rings. Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's because like, it's the shift, you know, like I, I knew the shift was coming because it was all about centers. It was all about shooting guards. It was all about forwards, right? This last 10 years, it's all about forwards, you know? So now we're looking at the the, the transition, and and Seth Curry or Steph Steph Curry started the whole transition, but it kind of like stopped. I I say Steph, but it was really probably Derek um, Rose, and it stopped. Sammy, and I keep what's up, Sammy, um, and I keep on going back to it. Like where, where in the history of the game have we ever seen this many amazing point guards in one spot? And the fact is, is that Russ. Our very own Russ Westbrook is what I would consider one of the best generational point guards of this generation. I mean, think about that. And yet, most people will never put him in the top seven point guards. You know, and he's still one of those guys that has done such crazy, incredible things. And people are going to sit there and be like, mm, I don't know if I could put him in the top 10 point guards of all time. And it's mind boggling, you know, because you're looking at this, this transition transition of we are focused on forwards. We are focused on centers. We are focused on shooting guards. We are focused on small forwards. Now it's like Sam Press is like, you know, fuck all that information, guys. I want you to think about the, um, um, I want you guys to think about the point guards. That's it. I'm going to fill my team with guys that can handle the ball at any position, going downhill, um, you know, dunking on people. Uh, the guys that are good at um, you know shooting, we're going to keep out and let them float out there in the, the three-point line. And we're just going to go down town on everybody, bro. And that's what I love about this team is we're picking up Jack White goes downhill incredibly well. Mirchik goes downhill really, really, really well. His his crossover step back when he's going downhill that hits the baseline, bro, and it makes everybody fall. Like I, I, There's been very few players I have seen like that you can stop on a dime like that and make just people tumble over every single time. And and you see these these things and you're like, oh man, like even if Mirchik comes in and averages 10 points a game, you know, six assists, because that's what he, I think he could do that. Play great defense. Well, that again, how are you going to guard that when you have four other point guards out there? How are you gonna how are you gonna stop that? You can't. Yeah, dude. It's it's a definitely a matchup problem. Um having players who's you know, who can get downhill, like you're saying, from every position. Um, it means that teams are going to have to go small to defend us, and we don't necessarily have to go small, but we can play um, a perimeter-orientated game with five players. And that's, and that's right. That's really what going small really means. Like, But anyway. we spread it out. And, like, you know how, like, uh, in the past, uh, in the past when we've done, like, um, four corners, but we, we had a mismatch and we're going four corners to find our mismatch, you know? Right. Um, and then you're able to get to that point where, you know, all right, this is where their guy is at. So we're going to put this dog. player down there in the post. We're going to put this player on the wing. Um, I see the Oklahoma City Thunder spreading it out completely, you know, and going downhill. Like you see Shea get the ball, dribble, you know, two or three dribbles downhill to the middle, pass the ball to Dort, pass the ball to Josh Giddy, pass the ball to Jada, pass the ball to Chet. And Chet and those guys, they do the same thing. Each time we're getting closer and closer to the bucket. You know, I feel like that's the thing. Like, how many times do you say, oh, there goes Shea right into the lane? He put his foot in the lane, and then he passes the ball, and the next player gets two feet closer than Shea was to the bucket. You know, it's like this game that they play that I love it. And, and the you know, eventually, J-Dub will get the ball and throw it down, or we saw uh, J-Will do some incredible things when 
he got the ball and benefited from those guys. So like, it's, it's all about just sitting back and just relaxing, seeing so, what's going to happen. The mismatch. There you go. Let's talk a little bit about starting lineups and I don't want to get stuck on this because it will, because I really want to talk about the second unit. So I want to eliminate the guys that were like, okay, these guys won't be second unit players. Okay. So we got Giddy. We assume Chet, Shay, J Dub, and who else? Who's the other guy? Dork. Dork's the other guy. So that's yep. our five starters. Yep. Okay. So our bench unit. I'm thinking Poku. I'm thinking Case and Wallace. Po- Poku's got to do a lot of work to get to catch up to J Will. I'll be honest, man. Throw J Will in there. So we're at three. Who else? J Will. Uh, you got Kenny Hustle. Poku, Kaysen. You got C- uh, Kenny. Kenny Hustle. That's four. Um, you've got. Um, Jesus Christ, dude. I, I can literally name these guys in my sleep. I cannot believe I cannot think about these well, guys. It right happens now. to the best of us. But my point is, it's Mitchich will probably get those minutes right now. I, so, I have to throw Usman Jang in there. I know people will be like, nah. Oh, nah, I nah. mean, Jang Isaiah is Joe, JRE. Okay, hang on. Joe, Jang, and JRE. We like to play 12, like 12 a night. Coach likes to do that. He doesn't stick to 10. So it's not going to be like a tight. Here we go. We got Matt here with um, Case and Joe, Mitchich, Jang, Poku. Road Dog says Bertans. Wiggins, good point, Phantom. Um, he says like, Johnson. Also, we got to remember um, Keontae Johnson. Look, so that hey, we're really you guys, deep. you guys are get forgetting uh, Kenny Hustle, man. Kenny Hustle is probably going to be in talks for the Six Man Award this year. Like, I'm serious. Kenny Hustle is one of those guys that you guys have got to put in there in your second unit automatically. Okay, so we're gonna. <laughs> We're going to regularly be planning, I think, going on 14 deep. I mean, there's just no way. Yeah, but that's what we've been saying. Like, that's why the Oklahoma City Thunder are going to be able to play guys like like Shea for uh, – let's let's just say, for instance, let's just use this, okay? Shea goes out there, and he plays a half, mm-hmm. and we just dominate that half, okay? We're up by 20 points going into halftime. Shea doesn't come out the third quarter. Why? You know? Shea fits, um, sits the third quarter. Fourth quarter, we still got that 20-point lead. Why should Shea come in the game? We got 14 other guys out there, 13 other guys that can play out there, 14 other guys right there. You know, like, it doesn't matter. Why Shea has got – why we have to do this is because if we can let these guys play two, you know, two quarters hard and then we can sit back and relax in the other quarters and let these other guys hold up the line, it allows guys like Shea to stay healthy. It allows guys like J-Dub to stay healthy or Chet to stay healthy because it's not just Chet, J-R-E, J-Will. It's like – like, I, I, I get it. People are going to say these are the second five unit. But the reality of it is we really don't know how the second unit's going to go because it's all about who we are playing. The second unit's all about matchup. That's it. it. It has to be about matchup. There's too many guys that can play. Like, you guys, we're all, we're all mentioning five, six guys, seven guys. But the reality it is that there's, you know, 10 other guys on the bench that can play and step up immediately. And if you have that and that depth right there, it's 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 crazy, man. Like it's insane. Yeah, and the wild card, bro, is Sam done for the summer? No, hell no. Sam, Sam, let me let me tell you why he's not done. Is because if there was fifteen guys on this team, the squad right now, and there's nothing else, I'd be like, you know what, he's probably done. But there's not. And we have young assets that are valuable to people. Like if I'm sitting there and I'm saying, hey, listen, I need to add a power forward that's going to hustle. It's going to have a good attitude. That's going to be a good player out there. That's a young player, you know, a rookie scale contract. Who am I looking at? I'm looking at JRE. You know, I'm going at JRE. I'm going at J-Will. I'm, you know, like I, we're not trading J-Will, but I'm going at some of these players, and Sam knows that we have some valuable assets right now that people want that are going to be very far down on our bench right now. Yeah, like Salty says, maybe Trey Mann will be struggling to get minutes, and there's going to be a team that sees an opportunity to give him some run. Um, Dude, Florida, man, he went to Florida. You know that he has contacts there. You know, like, like it is what it is, man. Like, Trey Mann's an amazing player, but – he needs to be able to get PT out there and he's not, I mean, where, where's he at right now? He's like 13th, 14th on this list. Like, and I'm sorry. Like 
I'm not. It, I'm the, not playing. I'm not playing him over Mirchik. Mirchik this year. I'm just not. There's a position that you have to be in where, like, if you're a young player, right? We are willing to make opportunities for you to play, even at the expense of losing some some close games. But if you're not getting those minutes, you got to go somewhere where you can get them. It's not healthy for you just to sit on the bench, right? Like, it doesn't mean you're a starter, but you got to get like intermittent minutes as you improve, so you can get better in practice and stuff. So it's not that we want Trey man to go, but if he's not getting the minutes, we want what's best for him. Yeah. And, and, and I also want to say like with, with adding Jack white, there's going to be players like, um, um, JRE, um, and these, some of these other Poku maybe that get, get left down on the list because Jack is simply able to outplay those guys right away. And this is not a dig in any of the young players that we have. It's, this is accountability. You know, we've been teaching these players and the, the guys have been teaching these, uh, the, the, the coaches and the development staff have been teaching them professional habits, right? Mm -hmm. If those professional habits don't pan out, it, it's, it's not a diss on the players, right? It's a, you know what? We need to look at a different situation. You know, we were sitting at a position right now last year where we were wondering if Dort was going to be signed on the contract. He was, right? Okay. Is Poku going to be signed on the contract? It's a signing year. Like these are things that all of a sudden we have to start looking at. Like you have Chet that can sign um, a, a new contract coming up in October. I think you have J um, Josh Giddy that can sign a new. Like these are things that we're all sitting and starting to like you know contemplate, and we have to. I'm sorry, Chet is next year, 2024 October. I think it is. But the point is, is that we start having to think about these things. We can no longer stay, you know, um, complacent and say, oh well, we don't. We can't really worry about that stuff right now. No, we have to. We have to look at Poku. We have to look at these other players and say, it, can they step up? Because if they can't step up, we have to get players like Jack White in the game and playing. Because we are no longer trying to develop every single one of these players. Because we have players that are going to develop into those roles already. We have them as rookie contracts, too. Like, we're good. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think it's Natius and Nadius. Welcome. First time, I think. So we're glad to have you. Yeah, yeah Dave's, dude. Dave's I love Jack. Crazy. I love Jack, bro. I love the fact that you love him too because, man, I, I cannot. Like when we saw him coming out of Duke and it was Mark's my first year at podcasting. It was our first um, draft. Mark and I made the decision that we didn't want to do any second rounders that year. We were like, we'll just stick with the first rounders and all that stuff. But Jack White was on my list. I really, really like Jack, but he was too old, and honestly, he needed time to develop. So going to the NBL and playing a couple years there, and then last year watching him just dominate the G League, bro, I had I had an eye on him. I had, I can't help it, man. These Australian athletes out there that are basketball players, man, they're next level. And anybody that can see that, it's exciting, man, because here we are in a time and in space where, you know, out of any of the other countries that have been developing athletes, Australia seems to be hitting gold on stride. This is what's crazy. On stride with France, bro. That's right, Camille. Mm -hmm. On stride with France. That's what's crazy to me. France is doing something special, bro. This France I know, is putting but, up stuff like Kentucky. What are you saying? You're saying Josh Giddy's not special? You know, like, well, look at what the talent that's coming out of the NBL. It's just a matter of time before everybody else catches on that, the, that what's happening is in the NBL, what's happening in Australia isn't a fucking fluke. This isn't just like one week and all of a sudden, okay, well, in, in two years, no one's going to remember anybody. No. What Andrew Gaze gave to the Australian basketball community is well over $10 billion. Because that's the type of money that these Australian athletes are going to start making very, very soon. So when everybody is all sitting here and saying this and that about this their player, that player... In the next 20 years, the Australian athletes are going to start dominating the world. And I'm telling you guys, sit back and watch. That's Josh right, Kings, bro. Josh Kings. Thanks for showing up. Sammy, you're the man. And absolutely, um, Dave's got that jersey. Dude, I can't help it, man. Every fucking day I look at that, man, it makes me smile. So thank you, Sammy. You guys you guys are the best. This is uh, It's fun to, to hang out. Definitely get back in the groove oh, of this. And Camille, our hearts with you, man. I hope you're staying safe. Um, you know, I know things are crazy right now, so please stay safe. If you need help, 
reach out to me. You, know, you got my uh, email number, whatever you need. Reach out to me. Um, I'll, I'll get you whatever I can get. Yeah, man. Crazy shit going on in France right now. Um, Dave, so you were telling me tomorrow the game is at 9, 9 p.m. Eastern. Eastern. I'm we'll be glad here, guys. I'm central, baby. I get eight o'clock. I get eight o'clock. Yeah, dude. You get early. Cool, I cool, get cool. Early. So, so we will be live for the summer league because we just can't help it. We cannot help ourselves. Can't help and it. I'm wondering, like, do you think anything's gonna happen between now and the start of the game for the Thunder? Um we'll just look at the um I would constantly say is I'm gonna continue to look at the roster for the the G League or for the Summer League because I wouldn't be surprised if there was a name or two that slipped off of there. Hmm. Keep an eye Butler? out, guys. Keep an Butler? eye. Are you saying Butler? I'm just saying, like, there could be a couple guys that are on that squad right now that that all of a sudden, A, they sign a contract with a different team, sign a contract with a G League team, sign a contract with a um, you know, the NBL. Or you got guys that that could get traded, you know, and we have a few of those guys on that team. All so, right. So you expecting any fireworks on the fourth? Um, I, I'm thinking I'm thinking anything that is going to be done is going to be done after the fourth. So it'd probably be the fifth on. Because the, in my opinion, there's there's just no reason to you know, the NBA is notorious for not trying to um step on certain situations and you know. It is what it is. Sammy, thank you for that. We um we definitely appreciate the likes, but in the end, we do this to hang out with you guys. And that's what's important to us. And it's I love it when we're sitting here and we're talking and we're able to look over and not have to worry about what the next next subject is because you guys are asking questions and we want, you know, we want I don't know, we want that interaction with you guys because it's important for us to be able to sit here and, and talk about what our favorite subject in the world is, you know, like you talk about the Oklahoma city thunder all day long. And yeah. And you watch. Know, obviously when we do it as much as we do, we do it because of you guys. So Mitch will be considered a rookie. So, so then he has 30 days. Um, we have 30 days before we can trade, um, trade him now. So, so uh, I saw somebody, I forget who maybe Matt said it. Um, but somebody said that, um, Mitchick for rookie of the year, wow. six man of the year at the same time. Yeah, that was That'd Matt. Sick, bro. So let me ask Ma you, Dave. Um, <laughs> yes, please. I know where this is going. And yes, I'm going to say yes. Well, what are the odds that we get? Um, One and two. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, all right. So let's just put it out there is I think at this Chris. point, it's Victor's uh, rookie of the year to lose. All right. Let, let's just put it out there because we watched what happened with Paolo. Pablo, right? Pablo Escobar. Pa Pablo. Um, um, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, uh, we saw what happened with him and the uh, word of mouth, right? You know, that's just the way it is sometimes. But if Victor misses 20 games, that's too much. And the thing about that is, is that Chet's not going to miss 20 games unless he gets injured, which I hope he doesn't. And if Mirchik is as good as we 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 all think he is. Then if we're talking about six man, like I'm sorry, but like if he's good at defense and offense, like it obviously looks like he is. Dort has to move to that bench. He's just got to move to that bench, and and that's if that's the case, then there's just no reason why we wouldn't have the top two um, rookies of the year, and you know outplaying Victor uh, Victor Oladipo, um, but Victor Wembanyama, Wembanyama. <laughs> <laughs> you can see how much I care about yeah. Victor. So, <laughs> dude, I think I think that's a great idea, Matt. We're gonna we're here for it if that happens. One two race between Chet and Mitchett for Rookie of the Year. What's um, up, Chris? Man, so I'm man. I'm pumped, bro. I'm ready for this summer league game. We're playing the Jazz in Utah. Is this the Salt Lake City summer league? I'm I'm pretty sure it is. So okay, you know. And I like I don't know who set it up here, way up there, but someone said the two youngest, best young teams in the league are the Jazz and the Thunder. I agree. I agree. I, I full what they're doing, the Jazz are doing is it's going to be something that's going to be problematic for us for long periods of time. 
And I also want to throw out there, someone said, can we talk about how bad Houston um, is going to be next year? Listen. Um, That's one of my favorite subjects. Yeah, because Mark asked me, said something about like the implosion that's an inevitable there. And like, I, I really feel like uh, Fred Van Fleet and Dylan Brooks are either going to get along really, really well, or they're just going to destroy everything in their path. And if that's the case, then like halfway through the season, when they both demand a trade and they're like, we fucking hate Houston. Like, I mean, I think that's where it's like, you know, <laughs> cool. Well, <laughs> We can get some draft picks for you guys, and that's that. But I, I don't look at these picks as being like, or these 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 signees as being like one of those things that are going to put them into the playoffs. I don't think they're going to put us next to us. And I think that you know, I think we're going to be looking at six plus, you know, some place in the six to four seed this next year for us. So, like, I I don't think that that. I mean, maybe Houston can sneak in at the uh, 10 seed or the, you know, the ninth seed, but still like, what does that, what does that do for them? I mean, they don't get their draft pick anyways, so I don't know. I know. Kaysen, dude, Kaysen for rookie of the year, Matt. I, hell All rookie yes. teams. I dig it. I mean, look, he's a defensive star and his offensive game. Like, I really do believe he's a knockdown shooter. I mean, his three-point average wasn't as high as you'd want if you're going to guarantee somebody that game, but he also can play off the bounce and stuff like that. He's going to do really well. Um, there's some really interesting things about what he can bring to the table, and most of you know, kind of what Wash is asking about here too is like, what's going to be the the long-term effect? You know, is this is Wallace? Does Wallace Dude, have the chance listen, to, to make move Dort from the starting lineup? It, it's We've talked about this so much, guys, all right? There's two contracts that are not rookie-scaled contracts um, that I don't think that are contracts that we're going to have on our books in three years. Okay. Okay? We have now what I would consider between the last two years, we have um, drafted the replacements for Kenny Hustle and Lou Dort. Those are the two guys that we will not be able to afford to be on this team when it comes to paying everybody. And I'm sorry, it sucks, but like the reality is, is that we might be able to keep one of those two. Okay, and if Kaysen is uh, Kassan is as good as I think he is, right? Then, in my opinion, how do you? Okay, Dort's six three, Kaysen or Kassan is six three, right? So how do you, how do you take Dort um, and say, you know what, you don't possess some of the skills that Kaysen's possess, but we're still going to start you. You know, like, especially with a young player that, that like a Kassan, like he needs that affirmation. So for me, I'm looking at it and saying, it's just a matter of time. If Dort comes back and is like, I'm committed to staying in Oklahoma city. I'm willing to sign for X amount of money a year. And it's a very nice discount. Then we keep him, obviously. But I, I just don't see that happening because I, I think Dort's going to get a very hefty payday in a couple of years. And I think the same thing is for Kenny Hustle. Is these guys are going to outplay the contracts that they have. They just are. And when that happens, we're either going to have to sit here and say, we got to trade them because Kassan has, has stepped up, because um, um, Keontae has stepped up. We've got to trade these two contracts right here because we can sign these, these other guys onto a much more friendly contract early in their careers. And it's just about that, man. I, I get... I don't know. I, I want to see these guys, some of these guys stick with us to the end. But the reality is, is that if you're not willing to take a pay cut to stay on this team and you're not a star, I mean, that's why we have fucking 14 draft picks over the next few years. That, I mean, that's as simple as that can be. I mean, that's like in your face. Like, you're not going to step up. You're not willing to take a pay cut because we have to keep our stars. And I, I'm sorry, we'll draft our your, your replacement in the next couple of years. I've already drafted your replacement. Already drafted your replacement. You don't have to worry about that anymore. And I want Dort to stay. I want Kenny Hustle to stay. But the reality of it is, is that keeping these guys will inhibit us signing one of our max contract players. And that's the key, right? Like, you can't get attached to them. Like, we talked about this in a lot of contexts, like with teams like the Warriors and stuff. But, like, okay, we Sean. really would hate for the team, like, the Thunder to to find themselves in a spot where they were paying players like Dort, and that meant that they they ended up losing 
out on Giddy. Like that would be rough, oh, yeah. man. Well, I mean, think about how many guys got $100 million contracts. How many guys got like $53 million contracts and um, 80 something million dollar contracts this last few days? It, it, this is what's it's just, I'm sorry. It's going to happen. People are going to be betting on players. People are going to be gambling on them and saying, I hope this player plays his contract. But I, that's where I just got to stop and I got to look at the Thunder and what they're doing. And, and I got to say, like, I would be shocked if we only had three max contracts on this team. You know, I, I mean, it's shocked because this team is is put together in a way. So, and what I want to say there is that I think you're looking at Shea Max. I think you're going to have to pay Josh Giddy Max, J Dub Max, and then you're like, oh, that's three. What? Well, what? Do you, don't forget about check, guys. So, how in the modern CBA do you build a team with four max players? Because everybody says you can't even do three. Ah, oh, dude, that's why the draft, man. That's why you develop the way it is because you can have as many max guys as you want. You can, you know, pay out all you want. You can pay $245 million in salary dump, as I call it, right? As long as you're building through the draft and you're not having people come over and using the, you know, um, free agency and stuff like that. Like the Thunder are in a p perfect position to be able to say, we might not be able to afford the fourth, you know, max contract because it's going to cost so much money. So we're going to go ahead and take blank who is older than everybody else. And that's ready to go in yeah, 32 years old, ready to go to a big market, right? We set them on their way. We get seven draft picks in exchange. <laughs> Retooled. Let's um... we're sitting in and that's just the way it's going to go. Let's Seven years, up. guys. Seven years with this team. After that, if we can't make it work, or we made it work and we still can't afford to pay some of these players, we got to sell them. Sell them. We got to trade them. Let's wrap sell it up out. with a, a quote from Corey here. Okay. America paid less for the Louisiana purchase, including the states of Louisiana, Oklahoma, Nebraska, South Dakota, and parts of others, for less than the Rockets paid for Fred Van Fleet. And it's from Reddit, so it must be true. Bro, did, 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 what did we pay for Alaska? Do you remember what we paid for Alaska? <laughs> I, not off the top um, of my head. What bro. was it? Uh, said... SeaWorld's uh, Folly, man? Seward's Folly, yeah. Yeah, like it, my, my point is, is that like, and, and on top of that, to think about this. Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, and, and they combined for like 63 or $64 million, bro. $7.2 million, so. <laughs> Alaska, there we go, 7.2. So you think about this, right? And you get Larry Bird and, uh, and Magic Johnson combined for like $63, $64 million in their career. And Fred, Fred Van Fleet just signed a $130 million contract, pretty much doubling that up. Like, think about that, guys. Like, how far the game has come. Insane. Road Dog, on top of it, as always, thank you. And Corey and Chris and Salty Dog. You guys are all the bomb. Love you guys. Man, so many people. Natias, you're brand new. Sammy Dog, as always. Yeah, Natias, Natias, man, we love you, bro. Like, your comments are fire. Get back on here with us. We'd love to, to talk to you for sure. Camille, Daniel, Phantom. Who else we got? This is, this is popping. We appreciate all you guys. Matt, for sure. I'm getting all the way to the end, Dave. I think we made it. I hope I didn't miss anybody because hey, you guys, guys are the best. Our buddy Wash. Just keep your thoughts with our buddy Wash right now. Um, he is in uh, France, so um, just keep safe. We love you, Wash. Niner by Nature, 88. Thanks for joining us. Anybody who is not Send me. in the chat, next time, jump in the chat. All good vibes. We love you. We will see you next time. All right, guys. Take Thumb it easy.